I'm not posting. I'm not posting. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good evening, and uh, welcome to another virtual event with the Norwich Bookstore, wherever you're joining us from tonight. Thank you for being here. We are so glad uh, to be able to gather virtually right now. And as we were just saying, uh, to gather from actually three different states, um, although County and I are very close to one another, uh, just right across the river. Uh, wherever you're joining us from tonight, we thank you for being here. Uh, we could not do this without you. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I am so excited tonight to welcome these two great writers. We've been working on setting this event up since uh, the fall of 2021. We're so glad for it to finally be coming to fruition. Um, and I think you're really going to enjoy what we have in store for you tonight. My name's Sam. I work at the Norwich Bookstore. Some of you may recognize me from either these events or in the store. And before we begin, I just have a couple of announcements to make. The first one, of course, concerns books. They are what we're in the business of. They're what we celebrate. They are what our stock and trade is here at the Norwich Bookstore, and tonight we are celebrating the Animal Days. It is the English translation, the long-awaited English translation of Los Dias Animales uh, by Kayla Baldelaville. We are so happy um, to be celebrating this book tonight, and if you love what you hear, we think you might, uh, I hope that you will check out this book. We have it on the shelves at the Norwich Bookstore. I'm going to post a link in the chat. You can pick up a copy of that book if you're in the area here in the Upper Valley. You can have it shipped to you anywhere in the country. You can have it uh, made available for you for porch pickup. Uh, if you'd prefer not to come into our store but want to purchase a book from us. And uh, again, we thank you. Your book purchase is what keeps our score going. It's what keeps the lights on. It's what keeps us able to do these events. And it is also what keeps authors able to write and work and that support means the world. So thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Uh, tonight, there will be some time for Q&A at the end of the event. If you have a question, you can drop it into the Q&A module. It's at the bottom of your screen. Or alternately, you can put that into the chat. And uh, either way, we will be monitoring those. And uh, we'll make sure that we get to as many questions as we can at the end of the evening. We'll leave a few minutes for questions. Now. We do a lot of events here at the Norwich Bookstore. We like to have at least a couple of weeks. We keep a full schedule for most of the year. So there's maybe something else that you will enjoy. And tonight, if you enjoy this event, I hope that you will go on our website, norwichbookstore.com. Check out what else we've got going on. You can follow us on social media. We're at Norwich Bookstore on most of the major platforms. And you can also sign up for our email newsletter. I'll drop a link in the chat to do that as well. And uh, we hope that you will see you back here. Um, thank you so much again for joining us. And now I am so thrilled, so honored to welcome these two great writers who we have with us tonight. Uh, we are so happy to have Kayla Valdeleville here in the house, virtually in the house. She is a New York-based Venezuelan author, mother, and rock climber. Her novel, Los Dias Animales, received the 2018 International Latino Book Award and was translated into English as The Animal Days, this edition that we will be talking about tonight by Catacana Editores. She's also the author of several short story collections, including Ana No Dueme, a finalist for Best Fiction Book in National Short Story Awards, Monte Avila Editores, Venezuela. She's published the poetry book, Viaje Legado, and edited the bilingual anthology Between the Breath and the Abyss, Poetics on Beauty, a compilation of essays and poems by 33 contemporary poets. She studied anthropology and political science in Venezuela and has an MFA in creative writing from New York University and an MA in Hispanic Cultural Studies from Columbia University. Joining Kayla tonight in conversation is Kiani Antigua. She is a fiction writer, a poet, and a translator. She's a senior lecturer of Spanish at Dartmouth College right here in the Upper Valley, and an independent translator and adapter for Pepsquale VO Sound and Design Incorporated. She's published 22, count them, 22 books of children's literature, four short story collections, two books of poetry, two anthologies, a book of microfiction, a novel, 
and a journal. She's won 16 literary awards, and many of her texts have been included in anthologies, literary magazines, newspapers, and textbooks. Some have been translated into English, French, and Italian, and she is also the English to Spanish translator and audiobook narrator of Dominicana by Angie Cruz, which is a favorite mm -hmm. of our booksellers here at the Norwich Bookstore. And I'll drop a link in the <laughs> chat to that as well. From wherever you are joining us tonight, please join me in giving a warm Upper Valley welcome to Kiani Antigua and Kayla Ball de Laville. Thank you so much for joining us, you two. Take it away. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> We're super Thank happy to be here. Much. And that warm welcoming, we need it. We know that. <laughs> Here at Upper Valley, we need it. Thank you, Sam. Hola, Kayla. Hola, Kiani. <laughs> so happy to be here uh, with you. Thank you so much, the Norwich Bookstore, for making this <laughs> moment, this this um, uh, space uh, possible. Let's talk about the animal days. <laughs> by you, my dear <laughs> Kayla Val, translated by Robin Myers, Myers. Uh, and published last year by Katakana Editores. And that is a translation of this beautiful uh, edition in Spanish as well. So we're finally doing this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're finally talking about. We knew, we knew we would. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> A lot, a lot, Kayla, mm -hmm. has been said about this novel. All good, people, all good. <laughs> You'll see. Um, and well-deserved critics all around the world. I'm not exaggerating. And before we dive in, uh, or maybe, should I say, climb uh, <laughs> the mountain, uh, let me just say congratulations, Kayla. This is... This is uh, an amazing milestone, not only a novel and another piece of art, another work, another something that, that I am sure took a lot of your minutes, days and nights <laughs> uh, writing this novel and then having it now in English. It's, 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 um, it's a fantastic thing. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm very happy that, uh, this is the, these are the steps that you're taking, taking us with you, all women, all writers. Thank you. So let's begin. <laughs> Thank just you for your words. So <laughs> kind. Yeah, it's been, it's been a journey, actually. Yeah. It's been, it's been quite a climb, but yeah, we're here. We're here. And I'm very happy to have it in English now. I mean, it was published in Venezuela in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and I moved to the U.S. in 2011. I moved. I moved in 2011. It was published there in 2016. And you know, all this time, you, you, I had published a couple more books in in the meantime, but nothing in English yet. And um, some poems were have been translated. Some short stories have been translated. But it, I didn't have my first novel in English yet. And to me, was it's been huge because it's. To me, writing is not about, you know, being alone in your room and just having your project, which is like so intimate and private. To me, writing is something else. To me, writing is a way to connect to other people, to share ideas, to have, you know, that possibility of finding uh, points in common and, and conversations. And, and that wasn't possible until now, until last year. Yes. And it's been awesome. I've uh, been able to, you know, to join other minds like yours brilliant and and full oh. of you know questions and full of life and and that's and uh, new readers of course to reach uh, this new exactly to reach new minds new yeah. uh, uh to make new connections absolutely yes yeah, yeah i'm sure absolutely sure that's that's why we came here to <laughs> connect so um so let's begin <laughs> with just a few of the things people critics and writers have written about the animal days. And I'm gonna say something in Spanish. It's a very short quote because it's so beautiful in Spanish, people. <laughs> and then I, I, I'll say it in English. Uh, es, uh, uh, días animales, los días animales, or animal, the animal days, es un culto a la aventura, al desplazamiento hacia lo desconocido. It's a cult to adventure 
to, you can say movement or journey or a combination of both to the unknown. And this was Ro Alberto, Alberto. Uh, Barrera, Hernández. ¿no? No, Hernández, este fue Hernández. Ah, Ahora Alberto. viene Barrera, porque son, son todos Albertos. A lado de Albertos here. Uh, Alberto Barrera. En la Copa de Antonios. En la Copa de Antonios. We'll have to analyze that eventually. <laughs> Only excellent literature can prove, uh, probe, I'm sorry, probe, into deep issues in a poetic and meaningful way and affect the readers as in a rite of passage. The reader of the animal days is one person at the beginning of the novel and has become another towards the end. And I am a life proof of that. That was Alberto. Thank you. <laughs> and then, these are my words. This novel is narrated in first person by Julia, a rock climber, walker, mountain climber, right? Oh, Kim is here. Hi, Kim. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that amid the circumstances that surround her, and I'm talking about poverty, machismo, chauvism, sickness, loss, uh, she gives herself to her one passion, climbing. She travels the world. She is born, uh, so she's born in Venezuela, and then she travels to California, Peru, Colombia, India, Nepal. So Kayla, I, I talked too much already. I'm too excited. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you a question, uh, an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> what is there of Kayla in Julia, the main character? Well, there's a lot of, of Kayla and Julia and a lot of Julia and Kayla now also. Uh, I used to be a rock climber, but, but I, I still climb, but not as I used to. I, I, I was a, a sub-champion, a Pan-American sub-champion. It was part of my life. As I studied anthropology, I, I dedicated my life. It's, it, to me, was as important, you know, there were, those were like my two practices, rock climbing and studying anthropology. And they were as important to me as you know. um, When I, during, I don't know, like 15 years or almost 20 years, I traveled a lot to rock, to rock climb. And that changed my life mm -hmm. in many ways, you know, because tra travels always change you. You don't need to rock climb. You don't need to risk your life to be changed by a trip. So let's start with that. And I think that's one of the kind of um, interesting things that I find in the book and I wanted to share because her experiences are very extreme because of, uh, not only because of the, practice of rock climbing and, and because of the way she faces that that practice as as a as almost as a yeah as a rite of passage as a you know um very intimately and very uh, in a very extreme way but also as she's changed as, as uh in in her journey and in her travels in the same way we all change when we when we go away and have a moment to think and reflect and look at the past. And if you give yourself the gift of that moment of silence and you know of connection, then something changes in you. And to me, that, that's what happens to Julia. And I know that it happens, and I know that it happened to her because that's what, what happened to me as a rock climber and as a traveler after. And I, I just love traveling, so that's my one of my passions. Um, I would say that what other thing which we, we share, well, we share the experience of Venezuelan, mm -hmm. but also as women um, that try to connect with other minds that are completely different. You see in Julia's journey, she meets many, many people from many, many places of the world. And sometimes these relationships she makes, they are super volatile and they come and go and disappear and she will never hear of that person anymore. But maybe that person is going to leave, you know, a little seed, a little something, a little question uh, or not. Or maybe we'll just come and go. And, you know, that's in a way that's how life goes. Right. 
Um, and I think that's something we share as well. And I'm, I'm, I think that everybody shares that with her as well. Uh, of course, the experience as a Venezuelan woman is, is a very particular one as well. Um, and we share that. I think she's very and, brave. And I, the, the, the little or a lot that I know about you, I think you're very brave as well. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, it's true. It's true. I think, yeah, I think life uh, puts you in, 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 in difficult positions, you know, and, and you have to make choices. Yes. And you can stay um, as you were and decide not to change. That's always a possibility. That's what freedom is about. You can always say, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let that change me. Or you can say, oh, you know, okay, I'm going to do this. And I might be afraid. I might be scared. I may not know what is going to come. But that's, you know, to me, it, it's a spiritual practice. And I have to say that rock climbing, in my personal experience, I don't think that everybody lives it in the same way. Um, it's just one activity. I, I don't even, even, I mean, among any many others, but to me, rock climbing has been, a, the, has given me the possibility of, and it's, it gives you possibility to connect with yourself and with your spirit and to make yourself those kind of questions. Because when you are walking alone, because many times you walk alone on your own for eight hours on a, in a row, and then, you know, you're cold and maybe it's raining and maybe you're hungry and you just stop for a second, but you know, you cannot stop for a long time because if you do that, you're going to get so tired. You cannot go, you know, you cannot keep, keep going. Um, and when you have spent all these times yeah. and you won't get to the place where you're supposed to be getting to where, you know, we are going to find warm food and, you know, the tent you're going to be sleeping at or whatever. Um, you know, when you have all those hours of, you know, just walking in silence and, kind of making peace with yourself, with yourself, with your muscles, with the tiredness, with fear, I don't know, with rage. Sometimes you're just upset. Um, well, that changes you, right? And yeah. it's a spiritual practice. To me, that's, that gives you the possibility of, of making yourself questions and, and leading transformations. And that, that's what happens to Julia uh, from the beginning to the end. That's her story. Is, is, uh, I have a few quotes here. Uh, hmm. one says a good traveler has no fix not from the book this is extra that I was gonna I was gonna mm -hmm. ask you about travel but thank you <laughs> you brought it up a good traveler has no fixed plans and is not intent on arriving I think that that is Julia mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. Julia. and that was allowed to uh travel brings power and love back into your life that was Rumi and then from Anna Isnin, mm -hmm. it says, she wrote, uh, we travel, some of us forever, to seek other states, other lives, other souls. And in, in Julia's case, uh, and we're going to talk about this later, um, I think not only she finds other souls, but her soul. Even though she's not looking for it, it's just, it, it just happens. It has to happen after all this uh, silence and, and, and time to herself and knowing places, I think it has to happen. It comes with it. Um, mm -hmm. There's something when you, in general, well, uh, I believe like m the mind doesn't work like in a, in a line. It's not like we have this idea that, you know, history is like what happened before and then what happens in the present then what's gonna happen in the future. But reality is the mind doesn't work that way. The mind is always jumping back and forth. And one of the things she does while traveling, and I think we all do that all the time is she's always going back and kind of reconstructing her past through her movement in space. And to me, that's key as, you know, in terms of her own experience of change uh, because she's not only changing because of what happens in the present moment in which she's traveling and moving from one place to the other and meets all these people. She's changing because she's remembering moments and kind of, yeah, making sense of many experiences from the death of her mother from to the disappearance of her lover, yeah, with whom she has a very um, complex and for moments destructive uh, relationship, but I was also going to say interesting, but that's not what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, well, they have, it's a complex relationship because there is love there 
and and but there is violence as well and it's advantaged might be physical and might be um emotional and and because there is all these you know uh patriarchal uh, also pressure upon both oh, of yes. them absolutely so she she changes because she she's kind of you know it's like a puzzle and you have no idea how much I love you right now for bringing exactly that <laughs> because I, that's my. I love you topic. too. I don't know what I, you're gonna say, but I love you. There too. you go. <laughs> but it, it's crazy. It's as if we were absolutely connected. You were talking about chronological and how life is not like that. And that's exactly this is what I'm. This is what I'm thinking. This is a story that, in a way, anachronistic. So exactly what you just said. The narrator doesn't care about following a line. In a way, I feel it reflects the emotional state of Julia. So the, the way that the novel is written, you know, she goes back like, oh, she's in India. And then she's thinking like, because two years after I went to, to Lima and then she goes back to India. So it, it, it's, it's fantastic because that's how our brain works. And that's how our lives, our memories go back and forth, you know. And I'm in a minute, I mean, one second, I'm thinking about my grandmother and the next one I'm thinking about what am I going to do tomorrow? So, um, eh, so I, she, Julia, who doesn't necessarily follows the rules, right? She, why, <laughs> uh, what is expected of her and can talk about, uh, we can talk about that later, of course. Now I want to talk about the descriptions uh, or the lack of them. As a reader, I don't necessarily know how Julia looks at all, or uh, I don't know about her mom, the way her mom looks. I know how her mom behaves, how she talks, how I will feel with a mother like that. Maybe I'm <laughs> too close. I shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> Maybe this is too personal. Uh, I do have an idea about, about Rafael. I do have an idea about him. Uh, so my point is minimal descriptions, literary, literary minimalism. That brings me to probably one of my favorites, my favorite subgenre, subgenre sub mm -hmm. uh, of realism, which is dirty realism. Would you consider the animal days as an example of dirty realism or you, what do you think? Talk to me. Talk to us. I'm going to start by saying that one of the pro most difficult processes, and it's my favorite process when I'm writing, it um, was the polishing one. I spent about a year just getting rid of everything that wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. When you start writing a, a project, it, it doesn't matter if it's a poem, I write poetry. <laughs> I write poetry, I write short stories, novels, essays. It doesn't matter what you're writing, but in a novel is, and in poetry. I mean, in every, in every genre, it's super important. Um, to me, it's key, actually, to make sure that nothing is extra, that nothing that, that is not necessary is included in whatever you're saying. For many reasons. Well, well there's two things. One, um, because I believe in the cleaner, the better. The simplest, the better. The most Take beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. I always think my readers are brilliant. They're going to get it. I don't have to <laughs> give everything to them. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> like I'm going to take away too much from them if I give them too much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, and But the, oh, there's also this thing that to me is super, super important when I write and I believe that you know, I enjoy a lot reading those kind of texts as well, regardless of the genre again. And it's um, the rhythm. When you write, it doesn't matter if it's prose or poetry. It's not only poetry, the type of writing that has to have a particular rhythm, a particular um, breath. A musicality. So, musicality. Yeah. If there is musicality and there is a, a breathing, right? And also, yeah, flow. And, and depending on the text, the flow is going to be different. If you're telling the story of, you know, a, a punk rocker, I bet the rhythm has to be different. 
if you're gonna be right now i'm writing on, i'm working on my third novel and it's happening it, it happens on rivers in the amazonia forest of course the rhythm has to be different this this there's gonna be a there's a woman traveling in a in a canoe and in in and in boats uh from one place to the other during for days looking for something this is not the point i'm not gonna say <laughs> but the, but what i what i have to say is that for example in that in that book i decided okay this is not a book i'm gonna tell back and forth she cannot go back because when you're on a river you start here and the river can only take you there it's what only one metaphor. flow what a beautiful so yeah. in in rock climbing is different you know you you when you are even if it's one wall um you move from one place of the world to the other you you grab one hold and then the other one and maybe you fall and then you go back again and and when you're climbing you also you are in silence because you are completely focused on you know on those movements and on those particular moments and space in which you are moments and spaces in which you are um at the moment but at the same time you experience fear or cold or I mean, many things happen it's like so to me it was important that julia had you know all these all these um jumps in memory and and all these um like a a, a fractioned uh a fractured way of telling her own story because she's trying to put her story together mm. she doesn't know that but she's trying to do that that's what she's doing so that's why the story come and go all the time so there's those two things on the one hand there is there has to be a reason when you why you're telling a story in a particular way or the other the form is informative for some reason there has to be a reason why you're telling a story in a particular way that way yes and then there's the other part which is which is a lot which is that doesn't have to do with time but but yes with the um, uh, simplicity of the of the scent apparent simplicity of the sentence which is as clean uh, just I, I just try to make it as clean as possible so it's to me it's more beautiful that's a very yes. particular case with someone with and, and I it's not that I, that's not the only kind of reading I enjoy and it's not even all not not even all my texts are like that but in this case I I, I devoted myself for about a year just to clean the book up and as I, much as I could and in that sense mm -hmm. I have to say something when you ask that question uh, about the um, dirty realism, dirty realism. I thought of mm -hmm. um I thought I have to say one of my favorite writers ever is Raymond Carver. I love him. Like it's like it's it really marked me when I when I read him for the first time. It really marked me. And to me, I think that that is a big influence. It's not necessarily the thematic has to do. Uh, my, my thematic has to do with his subject. Um, well, there is some a kind of pessimism that my characters have in common with it. La desolación, all the, all, yes. Yeah, and course. this feeling of, you know, there. it doesn't but matter. But I'm talking anymore. about the technique. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. of course, yeah. I, I was reading and it's like, the, there has to be a reason for this. And then it's mm -hmm. like, oh, dirty mm -hmm. realism. Mm -hmm. And you, you mm -hmm. might not be thinking about it. I never thought, mm -hmm. when I write, I don't think I'm going to put, yeah. I'm going to classify this mm -hmm. right here. No, 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 that's not the point. The point is that it came out like that for mm -hmm. whatever the reason, and it works beautifully. And Thank the you. most important thing, I love it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay. I love like it. it. I'm so fine. You did it. You did it. We can yes. go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's do kind of a little game. I will mention a few words that bring relevant topics in the animal days. Because I don't want to talk a lot, you know, in depth, because then I'm going to mess it up for the readers. I know all our viewers, uh, it's called viewers, right? Even though I, I don't even know how to call it anymore. The audience, the viewers, the yeah. Zoomers, our Zoomers. <laughs> the <laughs> our Zoomers, I like the Zoomers. <laughs> yes, are going to read the book. So uh, you can talk a bit about them. Okay, mm -hmm. let's just like make some connections here. Um, philosophy. Hmm. It's like what it's it's what guides them without them knowing, because they don't know they don't need it they don't need the theory they're just 
being the practice you know yeah being... they they are in a way they are philosophers yeah. they are yeah. they, they create their own ways this is yeah. you know this is this is life this is mm -hmm. uh, but it's completely the opposite of what regular people you know like boring people like us <laughs> <laughs> um it's so and they are questioning a lot it's not only that they are proposing they are mostly questioning like why why do we do this like that why do people live lives in this way and why do we think that there is not other way of doing things and i'm really thankful to them for that because you know it, they, that's something they gave me uh, and i believe and i believe them i i believe them i think they are right in that sense <laughs> not in all senses but in that sense they're right that sense before i yeah. mean um, when sam was talking about I, I swear to you i had no idea uh i wrote anthropology i had no idea you were <laughs> you that you study anthropology but when i was reading this i i, I was looking i i was see i mean i was looking if i could find it to show you all that i wrote down like anthropology. <laughs> i could see it it's like a um uh, so that's the word sorry that's the word anthropology um well when you when you travel and when they travel they are they are meeting people from different cultures all the time and they are trying to make sense of the practices of, of the place, it's particular her, particularly her, Julia, because we're mostly with Julia. And then she meets with people, as I said before, in different moments of her trip and, and on her memory when, when she goes back as well. Uh, but she's always meeting people that are from different cultures. She, she meets even, and, and they are, the climbers are like a tribe in themselves. They are a tribe. They have a very, and that's something I love about it. Um, the way, and like a rock climber, that's the way it is. Uh, we have particular codes, uh, verbal codes, uh, behavioral uh, codes, and ways of relating to each other. It's like any other culture. It's a culture. It's 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 a, like an ethnic uh, yes. practice, right? It's like a um, so that ethnicity. Is, is traveling in it with, with Julia, that way of seeing the world is traveling with her. And at the same time, she's meeting people in Nepal or in the south of India or in the US or Peru or Colombia. You know, to me, Kayla, it was because it's, it's a life that I do not, I do not know. I haven't lived that life, but it was so intriguing. It's like you meet someone, you even sleep with that person on, in the same, under the same, and then the next day they go and you don't, they, they go and you're, you're not, you're not mad that they left you. You're, you're mm -hmm. mad. So it's such a cultural, as you were saying, they have mm -hmm. a language, they have a way, and it could be here, it could be there, but you find each other. I, re, I, when I was reading it, I was thinking about Casey, my partner, he dances tango. And everywhere we travel, yeah. the first thing, before we buy the tickets, the first thing is, where can I dance tango yeah. where I go? And then there is, yeah. he gets there, and then everybody knows what to do, where to walk, how to say hello, how to, it's, it's beautiful to belong somewhere mm -hmm. like that in such a, such a unique culture. Sex, in both. Both what? Sex, uh, <laughs> sex as carnal and then mm -hmm. sex as género. Okay. También. Um, I'm going to start with the easier. <laughs> no, both are not. No, no, Is it no, what? Like, I don't know which one then. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Forget it said that. Just go for it. It's not going to be easy anyway. No, I mean, um, in terms of the gender uh, of, um, you know, uh, the experience of being a woman, uh, a Venezuelan woman tr uh, or and a woman traveling alone and a woman rock climbing, rock climber, um, gives Julia the possibility of exploring femininity from a place of toughness. Mm -hmm. She has to be tough. She has to be brave, and she has to. She does. She she doesn't conform the ideal of femininity. 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 <laughs> um so there's that all and and she has to relate you know she has as i said before 
rock climbing, I mean, nowadays it's different, but in general, rock climbing, you know, at the, specifically, I don't know, 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, maybe 20, uh, it was very a, a very masculine uh, environment. Even if there were women climbers, um, you kind of had to find your own way. And if you wanted to do whatever you wanted to do, sometimes it, may, it meant, for example, to partner up with women because then you knew that no, no one was going to leave you behind or no one was going to expect anything from you that maybe you just didn't want to do mm -hmm. just because you're a woman and you're invited, for example. Those things ha used to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and so the experience of, uh, you know, of gender being a rock climber, it's, it's a hard one. It's a tough one. And of course, if any woman uh, who travels to India in a bus at night, well, that's, that's something. That's an experience that really changes you and... and and puts you in danger, but also uh, allow you allows you to connect with your with a very very particular inner strength. Mm -hmm. It's not that you have the power to control external circumstances because you actually have to understand that no, you can't. <laughs> yeah. So you have to make peace with that. But at the same time, you you know you find pockets of of safety, and yeah. and that's something she's always. No, I never thought about it in this sense, but I think she's kind of finding pockets of safety in different moments of her, of her journey. Yes, in solidarity. Yes, with other women. And when she kind of, when she passes all the, through all these, you know, um, changes and cycles and, and risks, when she, once she has survived all this experience, she's ready to help others as well. Yes. So it, this is all about, you know, finding partnerships and, and, and building community in different moments of the of the journey and so that's something Julia say it's it does all the time and I think it's 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 awesome <laughs> I gotta uh, finish now we gotta talk about the yeah, other I know <laughs> well I think sex for Julia is in one way a very intimate offers I think a very it's what intimate it should possibility. Be. Of being, Sex of being, is what it should be, yeah. Well, yeah, she's the most, she finds herself in the most basic and and I'm going to say animal and primitive position, which I believe, as you said, is the purest way of experiencing sex. Yeah. So that's something beautiful she has and she has it with Rafael, but she also has it in a couple other moments and she has that agency to explore her sexuality from that place of ownership and honesty and beauty, uh, but also power. I mean, she's, she, she, her, she's a woman that, she's a human that is traveling with her heart open. And, and that's, well, and you can see that in the way she connects to other people in life, in, like when traveling and also in sex or, you know, and that's really fun of her. Next word, morality. As we said before, um, you know, morality is linked to, to it's a cultural thing. Mm. Uh, it, it's inseparable from whatever you consider right or wrong in your particular culture. And so that's there why is her case. I think that's why her case and her decisions and her lovemaking and her, uh, the way she lives her life, it's so uh important and it's so impactful because we come from from cultures where women cannot say i want to have sex mm -hmm. so the fact that she <laughs> does have sex and that she says she wants to have sex and that she shows how she has sex uh um it, it, it's liberating for all of us you know, I love that you're saying that because to me, when I, uh, I knew, of course, that I was going to talk about it in the novel. Mm -hmm. And when it came the moment of um, writing, you know, these sexual passages and moments um, in different circumstances, in a bus, in a cave, in a wall, <laughs> in a wall I mean, in a, in a tent, mm -hmm. you know, the, the environment of each encounter is, is, it's completely not, not only they are different from each other and, and they are like offer different landscapes to, to and con a different context to the encounter which obviously changes the encounter as well because on the wall cannot be the same as in a tent cannot be the same as in a bus 
it's impossible. <laughs> it has to be different. But when I started, like when I when I started writing on this, you know, and each time I had to write about each of these encounters or moments or. Um, it was a political decision. What do I want to do with this character? Is she gonna be shy? Mm. Is she going to be saving her words out of fear? Is she going to be thinking or worrying about what is right or wrong or, or what the read, re reader is going to think of her? Is she, but is also, she going to have guilt after the fact? And how, how, um, how um, explicit she wants to be. Mm -hmm. Because that's the other thing you may, and that was my decision as an author. And again, that put me in the same place as Julia, because I had to make the decision and say, who do I want to be? Do I want to be the author that is shy and, she, and, and feels that, okay, maybe I shouldn't be talking about this this way. Maybe I should kind of change this word or, or save this expression or, Maybe I should not take her there. So it was a political decision, and I and 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 it was a loving political decision. It was look, yes, I as a as a woman author, I want to say the way it is. I want to call it the things and the parts of the body the, the, with the proper name. And if I want to be a little sassy, I'm going to be a little sassy. And if I'm going to be a little, you know, I'm going to I'm going to be that. Free, animal, a little that animal. Free woman that Julia is, and that's something that Julia gave me as well. You know that freedom, that freedom. Because then I, I now I know how how I like to write about sex. That's thanks to Julia. And as a reader, I like explicit woman. Uh, explicit. Thank you. Muchas gracias. <laughs> you. No. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Your mm -hmm. honesty, your your decisions, they they trans transcend. They trans transgreden. Mm -hmm. the page mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it, writers are not in the world i mean writers change the world but not because they tell readers what to do but they make readers think and consider their own lives and and that the, the sex part in in mm -hmm. any in both in both areas made me think a lot about my life about my grandmother's life mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. who thought of that about my mother's life about my daughter's life yeah. Yeah. um on page 126 i'm quoting it says in my city you are either erased by violence or by the fear of violence violence violencia mm -hmm. well violence uh, expresses itself in the novel in two different ways one is uh, the sadly the the situation in which my country has been uh, involved and and that has sunk my country so so badly. It's not only political but also social and violence is you know is on one hand political and on the other hand is it's in in the in daily life. It's mm -hmm. uh, so in a way. Maybe Julia is not safer when she's home than when she's traveling in a bus in India. And she sees that and she realizes that that's, that's uh, the, the line she's walking on all the time, that um, um, tightrope she's saying all metaphor, the time. Yes, yes. She's, well, I mean, you either risk your life or let, you know, violence erase you anyway uh, let me make so a parenthesis should... before you continue page 30 um no not page 30 page 20 <laughs> i don't even know where i am right now page <laughs> 126 that's the one that i want page 126 in my city this is beautiful beautiful you are either erased by violence or by the fear of violence drop the mic <laughs> Well, yeah, she decides she does, she's not going to be erased by fear. Mm. She decides to live, to live life, you know, yeah. with all its risks. And that's, you know, that's one of the, one of the 
takes on violence that that is like all, all, all along the novel. As I said before, I mentioned we talked about gender, and of course, she as a woman, she's always like risking a lot and and very close to you know uh, dangerous situations and to violence. But also, she has a relationship with these characters, her alter ego or her, her lover. For moments, they they seem almost. Uh, siblings, you know, they, they really yes. love each other in a way that is not romantic, but that doesn't mean that it's not real. And, you know, I'm not justifying Rafael because obviously I can't, I couldn't. <laughs> but uh, yes, but I can. do he's know. Defend him. Well, no, it, actually, no. because he's my character, I cannot justify him because I know him well. <laughs> yes, true. But I know that he has a good heart. And I know that he loves Julia. I know that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Um. That doesn't mean that it's meant to be. That doesn't mean that it could work. That doesn't mean that it was safe. But that's the other uh, instance in which Julia sees herself facing violence in different moments of the novel, uh, for moments in, in a very, very dramatic way. Now, page 20. <laughs> <laughs> I was always afraid uh, of orphanhood. Hmm. And to remedy this, I made myself an orphan before my time. Ah, oh, poetry, mm. poetry, poetry, poetry. <laughs> Page 30, I stopped listening and focused instead on this particular hobo-like part of him. This faulty way of existing in the world. The animal days. You write... Mm beautifully and if people don't see that <laughs> they are not reading the same book that i was reading because <laughs> i cannot tell you how many i i write with i i read with a pen and it was just like like i was writing my own book oh, but it was just you, quoting Kenny. it so beautiful <laughs> um so there is um I know that that the time is almost ending, and there they might have some questions. But uh, I want you to read. I wanted to talk about human condition and self discovery. But read the book, and you'll see. So, <laughs> can you <keep laughs> read a little bit for us before we? Um, well, we had a couple of uh, sections that we thought we might. No, one that I'm like, please read this one. <laughs> which one? Which one? The um... page eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Up on a wall, there is only the brilliance, the sun heating the surface you ascend, the damp shelf you could sleep on. It's just you and this lizard that just darted past you, and this cave where you sat down to eat a snack with your feet hanging off the edge, your body swaying like a swing. The planet below the horizontal line, a meadow, one last phosphorescent hillside far into the distance. People say that we climbers are always running away from something, that we like danger. They have no fucking idea what they're talking about. It's an arrow, arrow wound, love at first sight, the dazzling of a wild animal in the middle of the night. It hurts. It presses, at your, it presses at your chest. Anyone who tells you you're trying to kill yourself doesn't understand a damn thing. Anyone who doesn't get it in time will never get it at all. You're hanging by a thread up there and you don't want to die. I have nothing <laughs> else to say. I why would I? What? Thank you. Thank you, Sam. See? Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I have like Thank another you. page. It's been of... so beautiful. You're so generous. No. Thank you, Kenny. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so and thank you. Thank you both. Uh, this has been such a lovely conversation to listen in on. I, I always enjoy uh, so much the events where uh, two writers clearly uh, not only are, are enjoying engaging with a with a work, but with each other. And uh, that's uh, clearly here in spades for the two of you. So thank you so much for letting us all thank listen in. Thank you so in. much. Um, I, 
I would love to know um, from from each of you uh, what's next for you. Are you do you have new projects in the works? Is, are there new things on the horizon for you after? Um, Kayla was talking about yeah. the third novel. I mean, <laughs> oh yeah, that's yeah, well, yeah. The yeah, Amazon like... <laughs> and the river going down. Yeah, yeah there's there's many projects actually. And the second novel is it's called Minerva. It's uh, it's being translated to English right now. It's going to be fully translated by the end of February, and hopefully we'll see it published soon. Uh, it's going to be published uh, in Spain, in Spanish, and then in the U.S. Uh, so that's there's that. I'm very excited about it. Uh, it's a story of a of a dancer and model for artists who is uh, the daughter of a queer family in Venezuela and ends up in the US as an immigrant. So it's a story of an outcast in many ways. Uh, and of, uh, it's a story about movement and silence from a different point of view. She, maybe she has that in common with Julia in a way. Uh, obviously the context is completely different and the practices and the cultural practices are completely different as well. But that's that's what one of the projects. Uh, my second poetry book is, it's, hopefully will be published this year and and my chronicle my chronicle or essays but yeah it's a chronicle book it's going to be published in end of march with suburbano so there's like three books that are coming out soon and i'm working on the third novel yes i'm very excited about it because i started writing and and i doing the research for related to the Amazonian forest and the, and the situation in the border between Colombia and Venezuela. And right now with uh, narcotrafico and, and, and minery and it's so complex that it might end up being not only one book, maybe two, we'll see. It's, it's a complex story and, and it's, it's, it gets me, it has me super, super excited. Super excited. We'll see what happens because it's fairly new. The project is fairly new, but it's going out well. I'm in love with it already. Oh, that's and so Kiani, good to hear. Kiani, <laughs> Kiani has like always like 3,000 <laughs> projects, ongoing <laughs> projects. Uh, I have a lot of energy. I don't even drink <laughs> coffee, people. And I've been up since I don't 3 a.m. <laughs> well, we have that in common. When she, when you told me this morning that you were awake at 3 o'clock in the morning, I thought like, oh, we should have talked. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Next time, call me. You'll find me awake. No problem. Next time. So the pizza, the walk, and the call. We got that. Oh, no, that pizza is <laughs> <laughs> So I... I'm recently working in, it's almost out, on the third book for children. It's a series. Uh, um, it's called um, Kiara Moves to a New Neighborhood. It's both in English and Spanish. And I am, I already have the illustrations and I'm, I'm crazy uh, about them. And so that's coming. I just published recently, I just published a book of short stories in Puerto Rico uh in spanish it's called bestezuelas and you know what i would love to share i can't wait to read it the yeah. cover because I it's something that i work i think i i got the, the cover in my head before i had i i when i was like half of the book yeah I, half of the book was not even written but i had that image and i kept looking like how can i do this and i found this amazing uh, photographer in New York City um, that had something similar. So I, I went to New York and he I was the last person he uh, did a session with because he moved, he retired to Italy. So I am, I am, it, it has so many, this this image has so many feelings, not only because it's my- We latest, want to see it, but, we want to see yes, it. Yes, <laughs> yes, so don't get scared. It's, <laughs> Oh, that's not the one. That's the children's book. Oh my God, look, that's oh, the this book. It might be, it's so cute. Um, oh, I can that is it. right here. Let me, it's a little, this is a short, short, like uh, video, if you want. That is it. I can That is the, the cover. And yes, I am the model, but that's not why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bestezuelas is also a little beastie, a little animalistico. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. So I, that's one of the things that I am working on. 
congratulations thank you <laughs> yes indeed and i that's i can see why you're in love with that cover image that is uh stunning um thank very you. cool very cool uh and uh yeah kim in the chat also says uh, very cool. Uh, I agree. Uh, absolutely. And uh, Meredith in the chat, uh, appreciating your joy for each other. Um, mm. Yes, agree, agree as well. Um, wow. Well, thank you both so much. Uh, I, it, uh, this hour has flown by. Um, it so has. I'm, I am yes, just I'm so glad. Thank you so both for fun. joining us. Very, uh, very sweet, super sweet. Definitely, super definitely. Sweet. Yeah. The, again, the book we're talking about is *The Animal Days*, the English translation, long awaited. <laughs> uh, Caleb Valdeville's Valdeville's novel. <laughs> no, but novel. I have to do um, these. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't have those because this those is Keanu. Yes. <laughs> well, oh. I don't care. <laughs> So, something for We're us. We're gonna to have my children's book. So <laughs> you have Wait to have a Spanish it. section. We have to talk some. Yes. Well, I I need to. I am growing a Spanish <laughs> section. So okay. uh, you hit yeah, me up. Important. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And if yeah. you're in the Upper Valley, um, and uh, think you would benefit from more books on our shelves, we've got a few right now. But uh, more books on our shelves in Spanish, I would love to hear about that because that is the, exactly the kind of thing that we are trying to expand and grow and cultivate here That's in awesome. uh, in our area. So um, we're so glad to have this be a, a, a little part of it in a way as well mm -hmm. um thank you my both people for buena gente i, I can oh. see that el grupo buena gente oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh cool i love to see that okay thank you liz mm -hmm. thank you for for letting us know thank you both for joining us tonight <laughs> thank you um and i i I hope you both get some sleep. <laughs> Honey, go to bed. <laughs> uh, and to all of you out there uh, from wherever you've joined us this evening, thank you for tuning in. And I hope we'll see you next time. And thank uh, you for staying. They actually stayed. <laughs> that was a great conversation. Have a beautiful thank night. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Days. Thank you. It was awesome. Yes, it was beautiful. Beautiful. Days. beautiful. Thank, thank you so much. Thank Johnny you, thank Antigua, you. Thank Caleb Valdeville, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a Have great night. night. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>